comes from Acts chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. One day Peter and John were going up to the temple at the hour of prayer at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and a man lame from birth was being carried in. People would lay him daily at the gate of the temple called the Beautiful Gate so that he could ask for alms from those entering the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked them for alms. Peter looked intently at him, as did John, and said, Look at us. And he fixed his attention on them, expecting to receive something from them. But Peter said, I have no silver or gold, but what I have I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Stand up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and raised him up, and immediately his feet and ankles were made strong. Jumping up, he stood and began to walk, and he entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. All the people saw him walking and praising God, and they recognized him as the one who used to sit and ask for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Keith is going to pray for the preacher today, it looks like. Pastor Terry. First, the Lord blessed this world with your birth. Then your mother blessed you with love and kindness. You grew up learning the world word of Christ and reading scripture texts. The culmination of your life work led you to hear. We have greatly benefited from your presence, crafted orations, and selfless attention to our problems. Now we must give back thanks to you today and wish you well in the next spiritual chapter of your life. Amen. Thank you. This is different than the first time I ever preached in front of a congregation. That was the time that everybody stood up and threw hymnals on the floor and coughed and stomped their way out because I was a woman. I didn't think women should be in the ministry. So it's a little different to hear words of hope and acclamation and things like that. So thank you, Keith, and thank you all. Um, last week I shared that my doctor who did my spinal ablation said to me, your luck's got to change sometime. You ought to buy a lottery ticket. Well, since last week, I had the siding replaced on my house. That cost $35,000, cha-ching. And what they did, they uh, hammered so hard that the birds on my shelves fell down and broke, which was sad. And in the garage, they hammered so hard on the outside of the house that the trim came off the top of the garage door into the yard. When I pulled it to open it, um, a spider's nest came down on my head. Yeah, and just spiders raining down on you is not a pleasant thing, and earwigs and all sorts of creepy, crawly, ugly things bit me in the arm. I came in Monday, and Karen and I were talking. I looked at my desk. It was covered with blood, and I looked at my arm. I want to thank Lambert for taking me to the doctor for a tetanus shot. That's all they do now. They checked all the protocols. So it's been quite the week. And here we are this morning. That reminds me of when I was in seminary. I was walking to the library. Those of you who went to Wesley Seminary, I know Sam did. I don't know where Bob went. Brookman. I don't know if he went to Wesley. I don't think he did. But, um... Mark, where'd you go to seminary? Drew. Drew, oh, he's one of the elite ones from north. <laughs> Sorry. Well, Wes Wesley used to have flagstones until I was walking to the library and suddenly I was on the ground. When I was walking, I said, where'd you go, where'd you go? I sat him down here. I felt and heard my bone snap in my leg, but I had no health insurance, so I tried to walk it off for four days. Kathy Cheney, who was the pastor emeritus now at um, Grace and Bosley churches. Somebody dragged her up to me and I said, who are you? She said, I'm, I'm a first year student. I said, why are, you, why are you here? She said, I want to look at your leg. 
said, why do you want to look at my legs? She said, I'm also a thoracic surgeon. She said, I'm not an x-ray machine, but your leg's broken. You got to go to the hospital. I went to the hospital, and surely my leg was broken. By the time I got back to the seminary, Doug Cooney, David's dad, who was the controller, met me and said, we just call the insurance. We're not liable. Thank you very much. So my leg was uh, a little bit messed up there. And talk about having to learn how to stand again. I had to learn how to drive again, because I had a standard transmission car back in those days. But um, learning how to stand is not something I take lightly. And I went to the doctor. First I went in and I said, my first question to the receptionist was, how much is this going to cost? And she said, the first visit is $600. I said, then where do poor people go? Because I have no insurance. She said, wait here. She talked to the doctor. She said, he said, come in. So look at you today, and we'll work out a payment plan. I was like, a payment plan for $600? One visit is going to be quite the amount of money. But I kept going back to him, and every time I went, I said, can I pay some today? I've got like $15 in my purse, because you know, that's how you lived in seminary. We paid what we could. This was before they had computers. You'd go in and you'd give them money, and they'd write it in the ledger, and they'd subtract it out. They don't do that anymore, but um, that's how I paid for seminary, like $15 at a time sometimes. But when I um, went to the doctor, I kept going back and back and back, and he kept saying, just don't worry about it yet. Don't worry about it. We'll, we'll catch up at the end. I think the end's going to be pretty bad. I went in one day, and he said, you know, I think it looks pretty good now. He said, let's x-ray it and see. And he x-rayed it, and he said, I think we can take the cast off. Now, we forgot that this is back in the day when they put casts on your broken bones, stayed on. He cut it off, and then we realized it was ice and snow outside, and I had no shoe. I looked at my leg, and it was skinny and white and very hairy because it had atrophied. The muscle had atrophied in only six weeks. Couldn't put weight on it then. I had to still use crutches. But the interesting thing was that it was supposedly healed. Now I think about the man and the men in the stories we read this morning, who are healed and they stand up and they jump and they dance and they have been lame their entire lives. Lame is not a word I like to use, but that's the one from the scripture. They've been unable to walk since birth, and suddenly they're dancing in the streets. That's a pretty amazing thing, don't you think? To be to go from not being able to walk to being able to jump and leap and praise God. Now, it's said that pastors only preach one sermon their entire life, and the one that I like is the one from Acts, where Peter and John are going into the temple, and there's a man lying there because he knows if you get people on their way to church, they're going to be really sort of feeling guilty if they don't give you anything. Amen? If you had to pass somebody out here on the sidewalk who was desperate and begging for help, you would help them on the way in, or you'd find another door to come in, right? So what do they do? He looks at them expecting to get something and he says, gold and silver I don't have but what I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ, stand up and walk. I don't have any gold, I don't have any silver, but what I've tried to give you for the last five years is Jesus Christ. Doesn't mean you're gonna be able to walk if you can't walk right now because I don't walk very well myself anymore. It gets worse all the time, but even though I cannot move the way I used to, even though I cannot sign my name anymore, or do sign language, which really breaks my heart, because we have little Declan here who would like some sign language, I'm sure, and I cannot make my, my brain tells my fingers to do something and they don't listen anymore. But even though things are going wrong in my life, I still have Christ. I did lose my husband, I lost my parents, I've lost a lot, but what I've gained in Christ is so much more than anything I could have ever hoped to lose in this world. So, that's why what I do lately is I pray something I found on the internet. It's been on my Facebook page, some of you read it, some of you have liked it. It's a prayer that I make every day. I'm gonna pray it for you now. God, keep my anger from becoming meanness. Keep my sorrow from collapsing into self-pity. Keep my heart soft enough to keep breaking. Keep my anger turned to turn toward justice, not cruelty. Remind me that all this, every bit of it is for love. Keep me fiercely kind, amen. Which is why also the call to worship this morning, we didn't use lectionary today, we're using my favorite passage of scripture. This is my very favorite passage of scripture, Romans 8, 35 through 39. What will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? No. What will separate from us the love of Christ? Will Parkinson's disease? No. Will infirmity? No. Will not being able to sign? No. Will not being able to speak clearly anymore? No. Will anything separate from the love of Christ? No. And what's what's up with you in your lives? 
Can your stubbornness separate you from the love of Christ? No, not that you're all stubborn. Just a couple of you, maybe a little bit. <laughs> Just a little tiny bit. Can our bad attitudes, my bad attitude, keep me from Christ? No. Can my hopelessness and despair sometimes when I look at what's happened in my life? No. Nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. Nothing in all creation can separate us from the love of God that is ours in Christ Jesus our Lord. Cancer can't do it. Grief can't do it. Despair can't do it. Hopelessness can't do it. Nothing can separate us from the love of God that is ours in Christ Jesus our Lord. Somebody has to say amen to that. Read that with me. Neither life, death, nor life, nor angels, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. That is what gets me up in the morning. That's what keeps me going. That's what's going to keep me preaching. I won't have a congregation. I hate to think of the people in the grocery store and things like that when I start preaching to them. See, it's a hard thing to give up when you've been preaching for 39 years. 39 years. The next Sunday, I'm not preaching. We're doing VBS Sunday here. I hope you'll all come out for that. This is my last sermon. It's not a great one. I didn't try for greatness today. I don't think I have tried for greatness in quite some time. But um, I'm looking at William back there. He's having a good time. But I'm so glad to have shared the last of my ministry where I began my ministry, which is in Epworth United Methodist Church. We used to be Epworth Methodist Church when I was in the old building years ago. For the baptismal font this morning, we're all going to reaffirm our baptismal vows. We're coming in together is the one that I was baptized in in 1958. 1958, that was the one that was used. It has Milton Brooks' name on it. I knew Milton Brooks Jr., not the senior, the junior, his son. But I don't know how many of you knew him, but that's going back. Kathy, I know Price did. Kathy Price is the only one I think who remembered me from childhood here. I used to babysit her son, who is now a big old guy. He's the father of Noah, who is graduating from high school today. And um, I used to change his diapers. That's the last time I swear I'll ever say that. I used to change Paul Price's diapers. But it's good to be with you. It's been wonderful to share these years with you. And I thank you for your love and your patience with me as I've fallen apart. One thing I did this morning, I wore the same dress I wore the first Sunday I preached here. I look like the same person. And I'm not auditioning for Cruella DeVille's mother or Peggy LePew's grandmother, I just let my hair go white. And I thought I could try to cover it up, but I just thought, nah, you need to see who I really am, and this is who I am. Amen? Amen. 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 So I don't have gold, I don't have silver, but what I give you, I give you in the name of Jesus Christ, stand up and walk. Take a stand against racism, take a stand against injustice, take a stand for love and kindness, for hope and peace, and the world's going to change because of you. It will, because you have Christ in your hearts, of God to lead you and guide you. Amen. 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 Would you stand